Alright, welcome to World 2, and I've got someone who's kind of late in showing up to this LP. God <laughs> fucking damn it. Alright. Oh, you knew that was coming. Yeah, I knew it. Hello, late in showing, SA, goon. And we got ice. So much ice. Hmm. It's a nice, like, I don't know, something about just that opening image that feels, it kind of feels soothing, I guess. Just the white, the kind of purish white snow. Yeah. It's about the last time it's going to feel soothing, at least in this video. I mean, ice levels can be alright. Depends on if there's uh, sliding physics or not. Well, you see that nice patch of blue ice down there. Oh, is that sl Oh, sliding physics. And uh, that guy on top of the... The Dantini on top of the bars that I killed. He will jump down, and if he's close enough, which I don't know how close close enough is, it's just close enough to him when he stomps down on it. Um, yeah, you get knocked off. Ouch. And that, I guess you're supposed to be able to tell because it's some sort of water, but that's the equivalent of lava yeah. in this world. Okay, how to get back up? Croc can jump pretty high. Oh, alright. Yeah, most of my 3D platformers from the, uh, PlayStation 1 era was Spyro, and that's pretty much it. I apparently really need to play Spyro. Oh, you haven't? No, I haven't. Oh, you missed out. But, um, if I may say so, just to introduce you to everything, fuck treetops. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, you'll understand. Uh, this, uh, if I recall correctly, the levels, a couple of the levels in this video actually have some good, like, concepts that, you know, had, had good potential if the game didn't, you know, mismanage them so much. Mm. Sounds like Croc is a lot of, uh, is a the lot of... Parts of it, the Ooh. best parts of it are things where you'd look at it and say, like, oh, well, that, that could be good. Yeah, a lot of ideas that could have been done well, but either mechanically they just didn't work out the way that they handled them, or just didn't work out because the team didn't think of it that way. It was while I was editing um, this video as well that uh, I kind of just asked myself what even the point of the color gems is. Like, what? The whole point of them is that, oh, you find them all and you can go into the bonus stage and get the last gobo. But the way that they're hidden is so pointless. Like, it's mostly to do with the whole some gems are, look like you know, they're in disguise as normal gems. And it just Ow. makes no sense to me why why they would uh, have the color gems at all. Because mm. they're only ever hidden in places where, like, they don't ever feel hidden. Like, you will always find them. Yeah, I mean, I understand that they might want to have a collection mechanic, but the way that they implemented it wasn't really that grand. Because it, it's adding an extra bonus stage on top of each stage, but it's a mandatory bonus stage if you want to collect everything. And the thing is, the only thing you can get out of the bonus stage, you know, aside from some lives, is the gobo. And it's pointless to get the sixth gobo if you haven't gotten the other five, so why not just have the door to the you know, to that screen be, be like locked by... If you haven't got all five gobos, you can't come in here. Rather than say you have to get another five of whatever. Uh, 90s game design? People have said that a couple of times in the thread, like it's to, oh, it's a byproduct of early pla you know, early 3D platformers. And I was kind of said in response, like, yeah, but, Ma but Mario 64, Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, but I they, mean... They got it right pretty quickly. Uh, let me look this up real quick, like, just when those were made and when Croc was made. Croc was 98. 98? Alright. I mean, Mario 64 was before the N64 came out. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, that, uh, that Dantini or Chuck snowballs at you. He's even more ineffectual than most any other Dantini, because he stops and gives you a nice standing target. Uh, I see a lot of enemies are either... I see a lot of enemies in uh, PlayStation 1 games tend to be either complete pushovers or... Oh dear god, why am I fighting this? I'm so dead. 
Well, pushover is basically every enemy in this game, because almost, I think, say for like three enemies, you can kill everything with one tailspin. Oh, uh, that's true for most game. well, for most of the PlayStation 1 games, it feels like. Uh, Spyro, you had the mechanics of either charge or flame, but pretty much everybody except a boss went down on one hit. Yeah. I guess so. No, no, actually Crash Bandicoot was different, because, you know, you can only really do this, you can do the spin and slide and jump. I would think it would crash too, at least. But, um... But they, but they managed to work in a lot of different enemy types that you had to come at from different angles because of that. Yeah. They also managed to get some... Oh, uh, oh check, check this out. Look at that. I cannot get that gem for the life of me. Uh, you turn like a tank. So, yeah. So for people who are wondering why, that's why I jump around so much to move side to side. Because it's really that much better. Um, this level actually is the one that I'm thinking of where it's like it's got a lot of it's got a couple of good ideas that I you know I I feel like it could have been done a lot better um, cause you see there's that gobbo just hanging out up there mm -hmm. and yeah, we're gonna have to go and unlock that cage that has a button in it and it'll probably make some platforms appear but I was really digging the music in that room the music is still forever good oh hey um just down there. Yeah, it's I really saw hard that. To get, really hard to get the camera to play along. Ugh. Oh. But if you do manage to land on it... Leap of faith. This is one of the bonus rooms that's not really worth it. Because you only get two lives and it's kind of easy to die. Mostly from impatience. Uh, the bane of any player's existence. Impatience and bad timing. Also, and I, I still think this is the case, that the, the collision on the... See, if you don't get that immediately, you have to wait a whole other thing. But if, I'm pretty sure that the reduced uh, frame rate, because this being this is a PAL version, I'm pretty sure that that's screwing with the collision detection a little as well. That might just be me. Oh, hell, there's absolutely no excuse. Crash Bandicoot was 96. Yeah. Almost fell in the drink there. A lot of these, a lot of these like jumps though, they seem pretty basic, but they're actually really devious. They put the platforms pretty much as far apart as Croc could possibly jump, and the, I'm jumping around to try and get the camera to move past the wall, but it, he just can't do it. So we're gonna have to go Walls all the way back to the other object. You cannot move a camera through it. Come on. And yeah, this uh. These ice platforms. Uh, terrible. The physics could be. I mean, I mean, the physics are obnoxious, but it could be a lot worse. That whole, I never got that as an argument. Like, oh, it could be worse. I know. It's it's a piss poor argument, but. I mean, it's not fucking you up horribly. It's just being a, a minor annoyance, which is actually almost worse because then there's no point for it being there. Yeah. So I think I show it here that um, if you don't move at all, he's like standard walk out into the thing while he's on the ice. Oh. That will make. Oh no, he does stop. Actually, I can't remember. I think I tried once, and he actually did slide just from coming out into the room. He slid all the way off the edge. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. But stop. Wait for the camera to slowly catch back up. Also, the fact that Croc has a cry of joy every time he butt stomps something. I feel like they... I still haven't posted it in the thread, but the, um, the, the backstory that they put in the manual, it really lends, like, makes it seem like they really just want try, wanted really badly for Croc to be cute and you know, adorable. And I can get that, wanted to you know, make something that would be guaranteed to sell to little kids. But I don't know, compared to... Considering it's like Mario and Crash to seem like effortless, like they just have they are kind of funny and fun to watch, move around and listen to. Yeah, cute might not have sold, is it? Even if they managed to get the cute aspect all the way down, it might not have sold very well. I mean, I, I can understand that, yeah, no, Croc is kind of 
So Croc is adorable in his own little way, but it's like, uh, alright. Uh, game wise. Hey, look at that doofy little grin he had. I don't think he's actually grinning. No, whatever. Could... It's just a tooth. Oh, yeah, he's... Singular yeah, he's got tooth. A tooth. A tooth. So, um, oh yeah, I never pointed it out. The, um, that whole, like, go and get the key and come back to that room. What I, that made me think of was, it would have been a really cool idea, I think, for a level, to have, like, a central room that you go into lots of different offshoots to, to have to open up different, to have to open up more cages to, like, make it, platforms appear to eventually give you the path forward. That could be a cool idea. Oh, you can also sidestep. Well, that's but, super um, useful. Uh, I, I genuinely can't remember if it does or if it is or not. But yeah, it's um, that was what yeah, that's what it seemed like they wanted to go for. Or it could have been a cool idea to have like you know, a to central room that you go back to. To have but one they, level like that, yeah. Yeah, but but they don't. Hmm. Okay. Um. I'm just trying to remember how stupid I must have been as a kid to have not found all of the color gems, because I know that I quite a lot of the time I didn't get the color gems. Oh, fuck, I forgot about this. What's this minigame? This, this is mini. This is the final minigame. Just fuck everything about this. Absolutely everything. It's that whole, you know, the whole wack-a-duck thing. Oh! Like a sheep thing. You have to oh, that's you know, jump on the buttons. But you have to catch every single one, and if you miss one, it's over. You have to kill yourself to get another shot at it. Oh and my... Watch, and just watch how long we have to do this for. Oh my god. We do this for so long, in fact, um, you'll hear it in a little bit. You'll hear what happens to the music once this goes on for long enough. And if you can at least do it long enough, you get that life, so you can at least have a mulligan if you fuck it up. Well, I don't care about a fucking mulligan if I if I screw up on this. What? And yes, I could have sped this up, but I had to suffer through it, so do you. Alright, thank you. Also, it gets really close towards the end. Because they give you less and less time. It seems like it. Well, actually no, I think it's the same amount of time, it's just you get tired of it. Really quite grateful for the, for the air control there. Oh god, the audio went out of sync. Oh, so there you go. Uh, if you go, it, this goes for so long. This oh. happens in any screen that you can uh, be in, where the music actually runs out. Oh my god, they didn't even put. They did not put in a music loop. No, it doesn't loop. It just runs out, <laughs> and the idea is that you're supposed to just. Yeah, be fast enough on every screen that that never happens, but it does. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. No music loop. That's just wow. Yep. Oh, now this is um actually this is probably one of my favorite levels in the game. I have to say. See, that enemy in the background looks somewhat interesting or challenging. He does. He's a nice, playful little dog who is literally doing nothing to hurt us, and he's dead. <laughs> you monster! That's, uh, yet another you know, poor, poor victim of Croc's crusade. Croc is a sociopath. He doesn't know what he's doing, but he enjoys the murder of it all. <laughs> He was brought up by fuzzballs. I don't think he knows a damn thing. He knows how to run and do a tailspin. Uh, and that's really it. Yeah. And I guess um, butt stomp. Oh! So this way, I this thought you just murdered yourself. First. Oh, no, no. This would be your first introduction to the water levels, I guess. If you hadn't found the secret in level... In, uh, world 1. And here's how easy it is to pick up gems if you don't immediately get them. In other words, not at all. It's not at all.
But yeah, this is this is a fairly harmless. This isn't too offensive. I would, uh, I would think that they'd that they'd make Croc swim, you know, smoothly since he is a Croc. But again, he was brought up by Fuzzball, so he doesn't know how to do anything a crocodile does. Uh, oh, here's uh, that. Uh, here, so remember, if, no, you probably don't because you didn't watch it. But that mini game from No World One. I, I watched it. Yeah, so that mini game. Uh, it's actually made a little bit more challenging because it, if you are really stupid, you could go off the edge of the ice. You know, I watched the first two episodes. Okay. And then, after all that running around, we somehow ended up going in a circle, and we're back in the first screen. So this whole... this thing, like, uh, the whole level is like, you know, go in a couple of circles. It's like... I don't know, I like it because it kind of deals with that thing that I was talking about, where it's, you know, kind of centrally located like that. You visit that one screen several times over, instead of just a linear progression. Yeah. You can, you can see yourself making visible progress. Especially with uh, with this screen, we have to go and get a couple of keys. We're gonna have to get a silver key for the keys that had that button in it, and then we're gonna have to get that gold key because it exists. We don't know what door we're gonna have to use that for yet. We get keys because they exist. You don't need to know anything else. And this is a bit of uh, intelligent level design, because they designed it so that you would hit the button, walk down those platforms, and then you turn around, and that's when you would see these platforms here. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice. And uh, don't look at the entire level at once, because the frame rate cannot handle it. <laughs> that was a leap of faith. I, uh, again, the whole camera thing where it doesn't look down enough, that really makes it hard to ever jump down. Yeah, until you get, like, the time frame of, uh... Until you get the time of actually having first-person cameras, or the ability to have cameras that just treat walls as not physical objects, so you can actually go... Or at least, uh, have the camera be able to move around them, you have some big issues. So, uh, I made a big mistake here. Son of a bitch. There's something, something that I do every single, like, almost every screen at the start of it is do a full camera circle to look around, because a common thing they do is hide stuff behind you, and I completely forgot about it there. So I had to go run around all over again. But I was kind that time. Thank God. And then it gets to go through. So yeah, that that's a fun level. It uh, it you go in a couple of loops and it's yeah that one actually looked legitimately enjoyable. It was it was kind of fun. Water water mechanics aside, and then you get this kind of I suppose this is fairly tricky uh, uh, platforming. Got to be quick on your feet to jump uh, on the platforms. Wait, did he just go splat? Croc, yeah, Croc says go splat. splat. <laughs> and oh, so... Oh, well that's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying, the cir uh, circling platforms, but... I was saying, an oh, so annoying and difficult challenge. The circling platforms have that thing, though, that, uh, that the other moving platforms do, where as soon as you're just a tiny bit over them, Croc will immediately magnetize uh, above them, so you can actually you know, stay above them, it's alright. Oh, thanks, Collision Attraction, you totally got the edge of the platform there. Wait, was that the first death? That was the first death, and I was really pissed off that that happened, because I wanted to have the first death not happen, that's me being impatient. I really wanted to have the first death be, you know, in World 3, where it actually gets annoying. And... What are lives like if that, not... And what? just like that, you lose literally all of your progress in the... throughout the whole level. You lose every single gem, and you can't get them back. Uh. Also, it's because, like, that... 
I swear that platform had ice physics on it, even though it didn't look like it. Yeah. But whatever, we're done. What are lives if not to use and waste? So, I mean, that was that was one of my favorite levels, but it still had you know, some moments of uh, complete bullshit. Well, not complete bullshit, but it had some really bad points in it. So in Chumley Snowden, Dante's bored, and he can't be bothered, you know, enchanting some animal this time, so he's going to take this uh, firework, I guess, and hey, now he's a boss. Just that guy. <laughs> and they couldn't do any sort of particle effects for the rocket, so, he, you know, it just took off. So he's just sending one of his minions with a rocket strap to his back. Um, oh yeah, here, I got a bit confused here, I, I, I think it'll show at some point, I'll stop for a second and look around, but I got kind of confused because in a screen that's very similar to this, um, there is a secret, like one of those secret sparklies, and I was thinking that I might have missed it, but it's actually in the, in the next level of the next video. I think it's here that I'm like, shit, where'd that go? And then I was like, okay, it must not be here. Don't waste time. It's not that important. So do you think you would have bought, you know, bought this when it came out? Um, well... Key differences. Would I have bought it? Uh, I'm not sure. Would, do you think one of your? Do you think I don't know? You know, like someone would have bought it for you, thinking you'd probably like this. That answer is probably a yes. Um, if I would have bought it, or at least asked to, is he asked for this to be bought? Probably not. I mean, not even based on this, but just based on what it would have looked like. But I did. I do like the background of it, though. Like the, uh, the skybox. Yeah, the skyboxes are pretty nice. Chumley is, like, probably the <laughs> most pissant of bosses. That... wow. No, he... no, don't. Watch it, it gets better. Because he'll start flying up again. Immediately down again. And immediately hit again. The music's nice, though. <laughs> Boss over. <laughs> I am stunned. And yeah, but it gets better. Because then he just gets up. He's like, ah, I'm free from the shackles of whatever the fuck. Magic rocket. Uh, now I'm kind of bummed out because now I've got to fucking find my way home. Stuck in this <laughs> fucking ice palace. God. Everything happens to me. Now those <laughs> clouds of ice in the context uh, of what you know, that means for this game. It means that we're going to be in a place with lots of death pits, and we're going to have lots of ice platforms. So... Joy! This is actually a really, really kind of pathetic bonus stage. Because basically this is all that it is. Just this one screen is the big challenge. It's just supposed to be, oh, make some pieces and jumps, kill a dog. And to be fair, these are some pretty hard jumps. But that's more because you can't see on the camera, like, how far you can actually jump. Like, there's no there's no depth perception. So it's not hard because of, like, timing or actually being able to do it, but more because of the way that the system is laid out. It's just a pain in the butt. Uh, yeah. But the timing, there is a bit of a timing factor with this. No, actually, that's still oh. the camera. Well, that's actually... Know, yeah, I, twice I almost jumped straight off that pla the platform below because I jumped ahead of it. That one actually looked like it was interesting. Whoa, that was close. Yeah, that's that's what that's what you get when you start mismatching the timing of the platforms. That's, that's an interesting trick to pull. And then once we go through there, it's uh, yeah, it's basically over. Like we have this. You have this screen, but it's yeah, it's it's kind of just nothing. You slide on a 
you slide on an ice bridge and kill that guy. Fuck those uh, trident uh, Dantinis. They're going uh, to become the most annoying enemy in the entire game. Let me guess, because they have obnoxious range? They have obnoxious range, their bullets have obnoxious hitboxes, but it, They shoot bullets? Worse. Oh god. Yeah, that's what the trident's for. They've done it, uh, they've done it a couple of times, or maybe I've killed them before they got a chance to. But, um, you, it, you'll, it'll become apparent. Or maybe this guy kind of shows oh, it off. God. Basically, that's what that was there, that whole thing of, oh, you've got to jump on a platform and he's waiting for you on the other side. That's the only trick that the game has for all of World 3 and 4. You will uh, see, see, this is it. Like, it was just those two screens and then the puzzle pieces here. That's it's kind of nothing. But, yeah, those Trident Dantinis are going to become the only way that they come up with to make the game harder. They'll just go, uh, fucking put a couple of Trident Dantinis in and you have to figure out how to get past them. And it'll be that over and over again. Mm. It's also kind of a shame that about what a waste some of these level designs are. Like, you know, they don't make them... I, I understand because of the way that Croc moves and everything else, but... Wow, they could have done a lot more with the level designs. Like, the bonus stages are like, oh, let's just throw stuff together and... Oh, you're done, alright. It's basically... It's basically all just... I don't know, people ask, like, how did Argonaut make, um, make Star Fox and then go on to make this? And yeah, some people just aren't that. They, they just kind of stumble through it. The aesthetic really drove, took them a long way. Yeah. And, well, it is one of those cases of just because you make one good game does in one, one genre doesn't mean you can make another good game in a completely different genre, especially if you go into it thinking something else was going to happen, or um, like different characters and different models. Yeah, I'm glad that it. I'm glad that this didn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they would have pitched to Nintendo. It must have been something similar to that. It must have been at least the core concept of going around collecting crystals and fuzzballs and shit. And I'm glad Nintendo said no because. Like, this is what this is a game that tricks you. It tricks you when you're a stupid kid into thinking that it's really happy and fun and great, and then you play it, you know, 15 years later, 10 years later maybe, and realize, oh, fuck everything about this except the music. Yeah, no, the music's pretty kicking. See, pretty darn awesome, but gameplay looks... Ugh.